Welcome to the Eczema Warrior Podcast. I'm your host, Julia Chen. I'm here to help you heal your eczema naturally so you can finally live your best damn life. Many years ago in my own eczema healing journey, I was stuck and confused on how to heal my skin. Fast forward to today, after many lessons learned and lots of trial and error, I'm now living my best life and traveling the world with clearer skin. If you're an eczema or TSW warrior who desires a life of food freedom and is wanting to heal your skin without steroids while using mindset and manifestation as a tool, you're in the right place. Now let's get into it. So I really thought about whether or not I should record a podcast episode on a life update just because there's just been so much that's happened over the past few months. It's kind of like things happen, but also things that didn't happen at the same time. And it's just been a wild roller coaster ride that I have not shared. And also because, as you guys know, I don't share my personal life very much. And I try to keep things more about eczema, more about business. But a lot of you guys do ask me about my life, like what do I do when I'm traveling and things like that. And so I thought I would record a podcast episode on a big life update. And also the reason why I'm I'm wanting to record this episode is because moving into 2024, things are going to shift and it's going to affect the way that I show up for you guys. It's going to affect my content and it's just going to change everything I would say in terms of how I show up and content and value and coaching and all the things. So even though this episode is going to be very much about me and how I've been feeling, just know that when I'm not doing well, then I can't show up for you guys. And that's definitely how things have felt for me over the past couple months. And I'm going to dive into it. So if you're listening on your drive to work, this is the episode for you. It's going to be a little bit longer than my other episodes. If you're at home chilling tonight, grab yourself a glass of wine, a cup of tea. If it's early morning for you, drink a cup of coffee because you're going to be in for a ride. Okay, so let's get into it. So for those of you who have known me for a while, let's just go back to a couple years ago. And for those of you who don't know me, and maybe you just found this podcast episode, I just want to kind of go back a couple years to where this all started in my business and coaching and just life in general. So in 2020, that's when I started coaching and my business. And at that time, I was actually working at the hospital as a dietitian. And I was doing both. I was working 40 hours a week at my dietitian hospital job. And then I would work 40 hours a week to on top of that to work on my business. So from 2020 to 2021, I was working 80 hour weeks. Also during that time, I was dating Phil, who was my long-term ex-boyfriend at the time. So we lived together during COVID and I was grinding a lot. I was working a lot. And it was not until 2021 is when I decided that I was super burnt out from working 80 hours. And I went through a very severe flare that was very debilitating. And then after that, that's when I decided to go full-time in coaching in 2021. And then 2022 went forward. And then now we're in 2023. So 2022 and 2023 has been probably one of the biggest changes or biggest shifts that I've made in the past year. And I just wanted to go back a little bit because Although most of the things that have happened in a good way, I would say, in the past year, I would say all of these things would have never happened if I didn't have sort of like a period in my life where nothing really happened, if that makes sense, besides TSW. But I mean, nothing happened in terms of like personal growth and development. So in my early 20s, I went through TSW. And that was when I was 21 or 22. And that lasted for many years. And hear me out, okay, I'm going back because this is going to be relevant to the current situation right now. So in my early 20s, I didn't have much of a life then because of TSW. And you guys know, for those of you who 
have been through TSW or going through it, your life is basically on hold when you're going through it. And those are my prime years in my early 20s. And so at that time, I couldn't travel. I couldn't go out. There are a lot of things I couldn't do. I was also in school for a long period of time in my early 20s. I actually took eight years to graduate, which is obviously double the amount of time that most people take to graduate, considering that I didn't become a doctor. But the whole reason why my schooling took eight years is because of TSW. I actually had to defer my degree and I almost got kicked out. That's another story on its own. But it took longer for me to graduate just because of my health issues. And so those eight years of like schooling and TSW and working, I just like realized that I never actually had time to focus on myself and I didn't have time to like travel. Also didn't have money to travel as well. So I spent a lot of time just like in Vancouver, which is fine. And then when business started and I was trying to grind my way <laughs> to success, which I'm still trying to get there. And, you know, success is like defined in so many different ways. But at that time, I was like, I really want to like make money and I want to like buy a house and I want to start a family and all these goals about settling down with Phil and all these things. So that was like why I started having these big goals and desires. And so then in those years of me working a lot in 2020 to 2021, I didn't actually have any plans to travel at all. Like that wasn't even on my vision board. Like I wanted to just buy a house and like settle in Vancouver. And now I've like built this business where I have decided to leave Vancouver and travel the world, which is crazy. And actually, that's one of the biggest steps and changes that I've made this year um, when I decided to leave Vancouver. Now, honestly, I've just been thinking about this over the past two days, if anything. Three major shifts happened in the past year and a half. And I've really never actually processed all the feelings and emotions that has happened over the past year and a half. I went from being in a relationship with Phil and was about to marry him. We dated for three and a half years. It was a great relationship, honestly. Nothing bad to say about him at all. Besides the fact that we just have different values, different goals, different desires. So when we had broke up last year, I was obviously struggling <laughs> within reason. Like anybody who gets out of a long-term relationship, you're going to have to heal from it. However, what I realized is that I didn't actually heal from my relationships in general. So right after Phil and I broke up, I stupidly got myself into relationship. I didn't want to. <laughs> it just freaking happened. And you guys know about that relationship. I shared that in a different episode earlier on this year. It was a whole situation. But that was another thing that really threw me under. And so then I decided to travel in November of last year, okay, in 2022. Without acknowledging that I had all these emotions and wounds and trauma that I needed to heal, because I thought I was fine. And that's like the problem that I always feel that I have is like, I grew up in a family where like an Asian family, right? Like we don't express feelings, we don't express emotions. And it's often frowned upon if you are like to cry, or if you like, showed that you were vulnerable and that you were like weak, then it would look really bad. And so I think growing up as a kid, I would just like suppress all of my feelings and it sounds really bad. And I would just be that tough daughter, you know, that would just like not cry and be sad about anything because you just can't. You just have to push through because everything needs to be hard work. If you want to have a good relationship, you have to work hard. You don't cry over it. You know, if you want a, a good career, you grind many hours and you don't acknowledge that you might have stress because <laughs> stress isn't a thing in Asian culture, I feel like. So anyways, obviously, this is like childhood things that I need to work on, but that has poured into my life as of today. So then when I started traveling in November of last year, 2022, I really wanted to see if I could just be on my own and use that as a way to heal myself. And honestly, that was one of the best choices I've ever made in my life, where I decided to book a one-way ticket and just travel alone. And that's when I fell in love with traveling alone. And I was fine. Like I was perfectly fine being alone. And that's a big thing too, that I've learned about 
just like healing in general, that if you can be alone with yourself and your emotions, then that's a really good thing. Okay. And so then I traveled all of November up until February. And then I had to go back in February because I still had a couple things I wanted to resolve in back home, like my apartment that I was renting from with my sister, uh, my dog back home. And so I flew home in February. And then it was just like back to back things going on. Like I had to move out of the my sister's apartment, move everything to my parents, had to store everything. At the same time, all my friends wanted to hang out every weekend because they knew that I was leaving Vancouver for good. It was like the busiest February to April ever. And it makes sense, right? Like Vancouver has been my home for 30 years. And to make that big decision to pack all my things and leave, it's huge. And I don't think I actually fully processed that because I'm really feeling it now that I've left for, what is it, like six months now, that I literally just like left a part of my life, a part of me back home in Canada, in Vancouver, and all my friends are there, my family's there. And because of all the challenges that I felt over the past few months, like I really do miss home now. And it makes me a little emotional, but I know this is just a chapter in my life I have to like get over just like the many chapters over the past year. So anyways, honestly, since last year of 2022, it's just really been nonstop. It was like Phil and I broke up after four years after wanting to marry this guy. It's gonna be funny if you ever listen to this episode because he'd be like, what are you talking about me? (laughs) But we're like good friends. So it's all good. So we break up a four year relationship. I get into another relationship that was like extremely toxic. You guys heard about that episode got out of that relationship, thank goodness, but it got dragged out way too long. Then I went straight to travel. And with traveling, it's exciting and it's fun, but it's also tiring at times because you're like always hopping different places. You're staying in hotels, you're staying in Airbnbs. There's no real routine. So it's really been go, go, go from like then up until traveling and then going into Vancouver in February when I went home and then back to back with that, with the moving, the packing, the storage, the friends wanting to party every weekend before I left and then leaving in April of this year and then traveling the world again, going from Nicaragua to Costa Rica to Medellin to Europe and now to Thailand. Like I've realized I didn't actually stop and I didn't actually slow down over the past year and a half. And you guys know me, like I will shout out to the rooftops, about how important like slowing down is and like self care and all the things And don't get me wrong, like I did practice a lot of self-care during this past year and a half. You know, I still do my meditations every day if I can. I journal every day. I don't have days where I'm always doing something. I'm not always working 40 hours. I even have weeks where I remember traveling. I didn't work at all. Less hours, the better that I felt. So from that aspect, I did really well in. But what I think was missing for me is reflection, being in my own thoughts, thinking about the present and the past, because that's important too, but not bringing the past into the present, but healing from the past and being more present with just in general. Because for me, I'm a Pisces and I'm a Aquarius moon. Like I get in my head sometimes and a lot, and I'm often very detached I can come off as distant, but I'm really just like thinking a lot all the time. And for those of you who like are friends with me, you know how annoying it is. Or for those of you who have dated me, you fucking probably hate it too. But it doesn't mean that I like don't care. It's just I'm always in my own head. So what I've learned is I needed to, that I need to still be more present and heal from the past. Because even though I practice a lot of self-care in quotations from journaling, meditation, getting out to nature, what I actually was missing is therapy, to be honest with you guys, and healing my childhood traumas and figuring out why I keep having these relationship problems. And my best friend, she always tells me, she's like, you do so well in all areas of your life. The one area you're terrible in is relationships. And because you have a huge relationship wound based on your childhood, And so you're only attracting people who are emotionally unavailable, who don't treat you right, blah, 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 (laughs) right? And it's honestly like so true. And so anyways, moving on to me not really 
healing from everything that's happened over the past year and a half has led me to this year where I got into a situation which is quite bad actually. And the time that I'm actually recording this podcast episode, things aren't going so well. However, I'm just trying to like take it day by day and hope for the best. Okay, so moving on to leaving Vancouver in April and then traveling. So for those of you who don't know, I'm actually not even supposed to be in Europe or be in Thailand. This was never in my plan at all this year. My plan when I left in April of this year was to travel all of Central and all of South America. I flew to Nicaragua, then I took a bus to Costa Rica, and then after Costa Rica, I actually wanted to settle in Medellin, Colombia, because that's where one of my friends lives. And that was a plan. I was ready to rent an apartment for at least six months, even even one year. Because I was in Medellin earlier on this year, because I already went there before, I made some other friends and they were all waiting for me to like come again. So it was a whole thing. You know, I was ready to pack, like I packed literally all my things in a carry-on. That's all I took with me, okay, from Vancouver to live in Medellin and like start a new life there. Start a new chapter, start a new life. However, the reason why I'm even on the freaking other side of the world is because something happened in June. So in June, I actually didn't have any plans to go to Costa Rica. I was just going to stay in Nicaragua. But for some reason, I was like, I really want to go back to Costa Rica. Like, I really love it there. So I hit up a friend and she, I met her last time I was there in Costa Rica in a really cute town called Playa Grande. And she was like, come back to Playa Grande. Like, we miss you. And I was really hesitant about going because when I met her the very first time, we maybe hung out like twice. So it's not like I like knew her very well, but she's like super friendly and I fucking love her now because I spent a lot more time this time around. But I was already anxious about like showing up to this hotel that she worked at because I just didn't know her very well. But anyways, I ended up going and it was like a two week trip in Costa Rica at this hotel. Had like a blast the first week partied a lot, surfed a lot, sweated a lot. It was a good time. And then what had happened in the last week in Costa Rica is I actually met a guy. And at that time, you guys, I had no intention at all to like be in any kind of relationship or date anybody. Also, because when you're traveling all of these places, it's just impossible to date at all, right? Like unless you settle somewhere and that's like your home base and maybe you can date someone there. But if you're just all over the world, it's like near impossible. So I meet this guy and we had this intense connection. It was unreal. It's like I, I've i known him for five years. I definitely know him, known him from a past life. He even told me the moment that he saw me, he knew that we were going to be together. I didn't actually know that because in my mind, I'm like, this is just going to be like a four day fling and I'm just going to leave after that. And he's going to go to a whole ass different country. So there's no way it's ever going to be a thing. That was just my mindset from the beginning of even traveling. But for some reason, he knew. He knew we were going to date. So in the four days that we hung out in Costa Rica in this little town, we had like the best time. We went out with all the friends. We did a hike together. We had drinks, we partied, we went out and like we spent every hour of the day and night together and it was a lot of fun. That being said, you know, we we weren't just drunk the entire time. Like we had days where we worked together. We had days where we got to know each other. We had times where we like had deep conversation. It wasn't just surface level shit, even though it may sound like it because it's only been four days, but it's literally four days every hour of the day. So We did get to know each other pretty well, well, in quotations, in the four days that we were together. And we just decided that maybe we should just consider traveling together. Now, my plans, as I mentioned, was I was going to Medellin, had everything booked already. He actually had a place booked in Tulum after Costa Rica. And so we weren't going to change our plans for that. So what had happened is after Costa Rica we parted ways. And in my mind still, I was like, okay, once we part ways, that's it. It's not going to be anything. But then (laughs) it ended up being a long distance relationship. We were like texting every day. 
He like made an effort with me all the time. He would call me. He would FaceTime me. He would like really put in the effort. And I don't know if you guys remember, but like last year when I was dating Robert and we were in a long distance relationship, he like never called me, never video called me, anything like that. And in a long distance relationship, you need to have like constant communication. So when I had met him this year, when he was like really making an effort, I was like, okay, maybe this could be something, but I'm just going to go with the flow and just see how things go. So anyways, things got really serious, blah, blah, blah. Two months go by and we're doing really well. We still have this connection. We want to take things next level. And he actually had an accommodation booked in Greece. And he was going to spend a month there in Greece. And he invited me to go to Greece with him. And then we decided to actually meet in Rome. So in just a couple weeks, I booked my flight to go to Europe. And I know this sounds so crazy. It's like, why would you do that for a guy that you just met? But it's a connection that I can't explain. But I do know it now, given what had happened over the past couple weeks. So it just felt right at the moment. And to me, you guys, not everyone's going to agree to this. But for me, it's like I'd rather try my best in like relationships and love and my career and business and fail than to never take the leap and to never make a move. And that's exactly how I felt. This is exactly what I do with everything. And so it's no different than this relationship. I just wanted to give it a shot and see how things go. And so I did it. I flew myself to Rome which was a whole ass thing, you guys. Like, first of all, I packed all my things in Medellin and left my friends to go to Europe with this guy. Not only this, because I only had a little carry-on, my friend from Vancouver, who I met in Mexico City, so I don't know if you guys know, but in August, I actually went to Mexico City with friends that met me from Vancouver. And my friend actually brought over a huge check-in luggage to bring from Vancouver so that I could have more things when I move in with my now ex. So anyways, I like did that. I had my carry on and then bought a whole ass checked in luggage so I could go fly to Europe. So I did that, flew to Europe, which was a whole thing. It took over 25 hours to get from Colombia to Europe with flight delays, flight cancellations, my flight landing in different parts of the world. Like it was so crazy. And thinking back now, it's like the universe was giving me all the signs to not go. They're like, don't go because this is not going to work out. This is not going to work out. <laughs> it was like giving me all the reasons not to. It was such a horrible travel days to Europe. But I made it and it was great. We had a great time in Rome. Also, I forgot to let you guys know there was another sign from the universe telling me not to meet this guy. So before I actually flew to Rome, I actually met him in Mexico City because I was going there to meet my friends already. He was in Tulum. So we wanted to just meet in Mexico City and hang out for the week before we officially go to Rome together. And so the flight going from Medellin to Mexico City, I ended up having food poisoning. It was like a mild version of food poisoning, but I usually have a pretty good stomach, but my stomach was absolutely fucked that plane ride. It was a moment I got on the plane. I got sick. I literally was nauseous. I was having anxiety. I like tried to do breath work and journaling and just like nothing was working. And I literally like had the shits. (laughs) I literally had the shits and my stomach was like, it felt like somebody was stabbing it. And that was my flight to go meet him. And looking back now, that was literally one sign from the universe to not go meet this guy because I thought I ate something bad and got sick from the food that I ate. But I ate the same food that my friends ate. They didn't get sick and we didn't really eat anything different from that day. So I have no idea why I got sick from that getting on that plane, but I'm sure it was a sign. And then the next sign was when I was flying to Europe. I literally had like three missed flights three cancellations, ended up in a different country. Like, (laughs) if that's not a sign of your sign, then I don't know what the fuck else I need to look for. And then moving on to Greece. Okay, so Greece ended up being probably the hardest month in terms of how I felt emotionally and mentally. Also, P.S., you guys, I'm trying not to make this a relationship episode, but also like the update is a lot of it's based on this. 
and moving forward. So please be patient with me. So in Greece, things really started to go downhill. We went from having like a really intense connection and like a lot of fun to just like a complete disconnect. We started not seeing eye to eye when it comes to things. And I would get triggered by certain things. He would get triggered by certain things. We don't know why we're getting triggered. We don't understand what's going on. It's all confusing. We're like booking separate hotels on certain weekends so we can spend time alone. We'd like go for long walks and not want to go home to each other. It was so crazy. And then we'd have like really amazing days. We're like, we're in love with each other and it's all good. We literally started saying I love you within a month because it literally felt so real and intense and like I thought he was the one I thought it was this was it like he's ambitious he's smart he's charming he's handsome he's hardworking. he's kind he checked off all the things I see in a guy and same with him too he like felt the same way about me as well and that's why we made the quick decision to move in together because he actually has a place in Asia and so the whole plan was to go to Europe together then fly to Asia together which is why I'm in Thailand but not with him obviously So yeah, anyways, things started to go downhill and September was honestly a very hard month. I don't know if you guys noticed, but my friends definitely did. They're like, you've been quiet lately, like even though you're kind of showing up, but like not really. And I can see that you're sad. (laughs) And it makes sense, right? You guys like, you know, when you're not doing well in an area of your life, it's going to pour in other areas of your life, even though you don't try to make it happen that way because who wants to do that right like if you're having relationship issues you don't want it to affect your career right nobody wants that you don't want to affect your school but energetically it does because you're putting your energy into something that's not working and you're trying to fix things it takes energy away from other things so honestly in September was like a not so good business month for me and leading up to October was a little bit better more so But it felt a little off in terms of how I was feeling and how I was showing up. And it makes a lot of sense now because we were not always doing very well. And you guys, like, I have never tried this hard when it comes to relationships. I literally poured my heart and soul into this one. Like, I literally was, like, listening to podcasts about, like, how to have a healthy relationship. I was like journaling every single day about like what to do and why am I feeling this way and trying to manifestation script to make sure everything was good. Like I've never done that for anybody. Even with Phil, like Phil and I's relationship, we never even fought. (laughs) And if we did, it was like we were drunk and we'll just get over it the next day. We never fought. And so it's really interesting the lessons that I've learned from this whole experience over the past few months because I learned a lot about myself that I probably wouldn't have seen if I didn't actually meet him. And even though we ended off things good at first, but then it ended up being really bad. We're actually on like really bad terms right now. I'm in a way just kind of, I have to kind of accept that now because sometimes you can try really hard to make things work. But also at the same time, you don't have to force things to make things work. And that's one of the lessons I've learned is relationships and love doesn't have to be forced. It should feel in alignment. It should feel flowy. It should feel non-restrictive. Does that sound familiar, you guys? (laughs) Like I talk all about this when it comes to eczema healing, right? Like when you're healing your skin, the more that you force, the more that you are desperate, the more that you think about it, the more that you stress about it, the harder it is for it to heal. And I'm like very good at applying this to healing and my eczema. I can heal my eczema in like a matter of days by just like implementing like a few things and just, you know, following that concept of releasing control and letting things go with the flow. But when it comes to other areas of my life, I'm always trying to force things. I'm like, okay, love needs to be hard. So I'm going to try and force it to make it work. And what I also learned is to always, always trust your gut. Your gut feeling is never, never wrong. And I kept pushing that gut feeling away when things weren't going right. I was like, I don't think this is a good relationship. In my gut, I knew that. But in my head, I was like, I flew from Europe for this guy and 
we have so much potential. We literally wanted to build a life together. It was a whole thing. We were like in love. And so I didn't want to give up. But something, there was a voice. There was a voice like in my head or like something that was telling me in a way that I need to just let it go. And it isn't it. (sighs) Thinking back, I should have just let it go. But anyways, I had to go through this as a lesson and I had to learn from it. And the biggest lesson, I mean, I mean, there's so many lessons that I learned, but a few of them is number one, always trust your gut. It's never wrong. Number two, work on my traumas <laughs> and relationship wounds is what I would call them. Cause all of these issues that I've had with him and all these fights, little fights that we had over the past few months, obviously is a reflection of something that's triggering us, both of us, that we need to heal from, that I do see now. And I, honestly, I hope he sees it too. I don't know if he ever will because we're not on good terms, but I hope that he takes this as a lesson to heal himself because we both have issues to work on. <laughs> but anyways, so if you guys have felt that I've been like low a little bit lately over the past couple months, this is why. Now that we've broken up, my plans basically entirely changed. So I went from being in Greece with him to getting on a cruise with him and the cruise did not go well. Actually, it was terrible. He actually had to disembark the boat early. I got kicked out of the room that we were sharing um, because we got in a huge fight. It was a whole thing. I couldn't find another room. had to go back to the room and it was not not fun. Finally got lucky and got myself a new room, moved out of that room. And then, you know, we were just going to do our own thing. But a few things happened the last weekend before he got off the boat that I actually didn't know about. The reason why I knew about it is because I made a bunch of friends on the boat and I love them. They're Honestly, traveling solo is the best because that's like you just do your own thing and just like meet a bunch of people. I was like not meeting anybody when I was like in a relationship with him not that I'm like trying to meet other guys but like just meeting people and friends in general like we should be doing that even if you're a relationship or not and when I was with him I felt like I was just like not really doing what I wanted to do which is like explore and like make new friends and anyways I ended up doing all those things because the cruise in Europe was actually a fucking blast one of the best cruises I've been on. And I've been on many cruises as a child, but this is actually my first cruise as an adult. But what I loved about this cruise, and we're a little bit on a tangent here, but I want to share this cruise experience. What's really fun about this cruise is there's not very many at sea days, which is perfect. Only one day at sea. And then all the other days, you get to visit a new city in Europe. So the first day we got on in Athens, Next day was Santorini, then we had a sea day, and then Naples, Rome, Florence, Cannes in France, Palma, Mallorca in Spain, Barcelona in Spain, Ibiza, Spain, Motril, Spain, yeah, and then Seville. Seville? Am I saying that right? Anyway, so the boat docked at a different city every day, so you could literally just get off and explore pretty much all of Europe. And I fucking loved it. It was great. The first few days, a little bit challenging just because, yeah, we were just not vibing. And at that point, my ex and I had just broken up a few days before, but we actually wanted to use the cruise as our last trip together in Europe before we officially part ways. So we actually ended off originally on good terms, but things really started to go downhill on the boat. A few days into the cruise, we were like fighting and just not seeing eye to eye, like kind of the same situation that's been happening even just months ago, but kind of a little bit more intense just because I think there's just, I guess, built up of, I don't know, anger on his end. I don't know, guys, like (laughs) something's not right here. Things were just triggering both of us and we just not, we're just not, we just don't get each other. It's like, I don't know if you guys ever dated someone and you just like try to explain to them how you feel but then when you explain how you feel it's like an attack to them and then when they try to explain to you how they feel they feel that you don't understand does that make sense 
So it's like we're just both trying to like explain, but it's not getting through to each other. And one person's getting triggered, the other person doesn't get it, and then it just becomes this whole thing. I've concluded that we just speak different languages. I'm speaking English, he's speaking fucking French or some shit, and it's not working out. I don't know how it went from being amazing and having the best communication to literally shit. <laughs> like, I really don't know. Actually, I do know. We have a karmic relationship, which I will share in a few minutes. But anyways, on the cruise, because the cruise is really when where the tea kind of happens, okay? So on the cruise, it was like not a vibe, I would say, in the first few days. And on Friday, we had like a conversation on the cruise and that conversation did not go well. And I will not share the details of the conversation, but long story short, I took something kind of personally and I just was a little sad at the way that he feels about me. And so Friday night, I ended up leaving the room because I needed space and I went to go grab a drink at one of the bars and I brought, got a little bit too drunk off martinis, martini girl, and actually ended up meeting my first two friends, um, these two girls who were traveling solo. And we were drinking, having a good time. And what had happened was we were in the elevator and the girls were like asking me, where are you from? Like, who are you here with? And obviously like my story is a little bit crazy. So I started telling them that, you know, I'm here on the boat with my ex yada 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 and as I am telling them the story the elevator door opens and guess who's there (laughs) him like out of all floors there's fucking 13 floors and he has to be on the elevator floor that I'm with these girls like what are the chances so the elevator door opens and he's like by the stairs not actually waiting for the elevator and me and my drunk ass so there's this thing guys when I get drunk I just like say whatever I'm pretty vocal, I would say, in general. But when I'm drunk, I'm, like, extra vocal. And, like, it can be triggering for some people if they don't know me. So, anyway, so the girls are just like, oh, like, he's, like, looking back at you. And, like, I think he, like, raised his hand, like, waved or something. And then because I was pretty hurt from the conversation we had back in the room, which is why I left the room in the first place, the girls were just like, do you know him? And I'm like nope (laughs) and then I dragged them back in the elevator and then closed elevator door closed okay now you guys can imagine what happened after that it was very ugly and not pretty he was not happy at all about the way the things that I said it really disrespected him which I totally understand But I was trying to like explain my perspective, you know, telling him that I didn't mean that. And, you know, I I was really hurt from what he had said to me in the cabin and I was tipsy and I just like whatever. Obviously, he didn't take that very well. And I'm not trying to make excuses. Like I said what I said, but I really didn't mean it. There's no way that I would mean, oh, I, I we don't know him. You know, it's just me being me, Julia being a fucking drunk ass, like get over it, you know? But it was like a whole thing. Like we got in a huge fight. I saw this side of him that I've never seen before. It was not pretty. And it all led to me leaving the room, packing all my belongings, having to pay for an extra room. So I left the room the next day. And before I could find a room, the next morning when I woke up, I went to the gym and then I came back. He wasn't there. I was like, good, I'm going to pack my things and spend my day in Cannes, France. So my friends wanted to go out off the boat. And I went back to the room to grab a few things to leave. And we crossed paths. And he ignores me. And I'm like, okay, whatever. Maybe we'll just, whatever. Then he walks by past me. And then I go into the room. And I'm like, okay, I guess he's ignoring me now. And he comes back to the room. And he knocks on the washroom door because I'm inside. And I come out and I'm like, hey, what's up? And he's just like, I don't know if I should make peace with you and just enjoy the rest of the trip or just never talk to you again. And he's like upset, okay? And I'm like, look, I am very happy to disembark the boat early. Either I do or you do. And I'm going to try and find a different room so you don't have to worry about anything. Um, And he's basically like, 
I can't afford to get off the boat because he's, yeah, just couldn't afford getting off the boat. So I'm like, you know what? It's all good. Let me just get the shit end of the stick like I always do. (laughs) And I will get off the fucking boat and I will go and change my flight and I will go book an accommodation. So that's what I was planning to do. You know, I went to the counter and I told them I was disembarking in Barcelona. I was ready to go. So at this point, he doesn't know what I'm actually doing. I, I told him I'm going to get off the boat on Monday in Barcelona, which is where we were. And that I was going to get another room. But I wasn't sure if there was going to be another room. So he ends up obviously finding out that I did find another room because Saturday night, I was no longer there. I had my own room. And this is when shit went down, <laughs> you guys. Okay. By the way, I'm sniffling right now, not because I'm like crying. It's just... I'm like, I don't know. My nose is a little runny. So Saturday night after my friends and I explored Cannes, France, by the way, if you guys have been to France, Cannes is like the cutest town. They have like the cutest restaurants. Food there is really good and it's just clean. I love it there. French guys in Cannes are gorgeous, by the way. I don't know if this is like a Cannes thing because it's like a bougie town where all the rich people live, but... I saw the most handsome guy with like ice blue eyes and like dirty brown hair. And he was a vibe. He was our server at one of the restaurants. I was like, oh, he's cute. He's cute. And I'm single now, so I can look at guys. Okay. Anyways, after exploring Cannes, I went back to the boat. And this was actually the first night where I met everyone else on the boat. So I got invited to dinner from the two girls that I met from the night before and there was like 15 of us people traveling solo on this boat and I met people from all over the world mostly Americans and we went to dinner that night at this Japanese restaurant ordered way too many sake bombs I haven't drank sake bombs in like freaking 20 years I feel like I almost forgot how to like order them we were like banging the table we were so loud at the restaurant and it was a good time and obviously like we all were drinking way too much So on Saturday night, we ended up at the club. And so on this cruise, there's like one club. There's like two, three main bars everyone goes to. And that's pretty much it. So we're at the club. I'm like hammered at this point because all my friends are ordering shots because we all have unlimited alcohol as like a package that we added onto our cruise. So we're like ordering tequila shots and ordering martinis. And it was crazy okay and he shows up to the club of course and this guy is like shit-faced okay he's on the dance floor dancing with like one of my one she's not my friend but she's like part of the group he was apparently trying to make me jealous according to my friends who were like keeping an eye on him he was flickering me off from the dance floor a straight up middle finger i don't remember this because i'm drunk And I remember sitting at one of the booths because we had a little section and he was sitting with my friends. So it was like me, my other girlfriends, uh, my friend Joe. And I remember him sitting in our table and then I was vaping. So when I drink, I vape. Okay. But I had his vape with me. And so I was vaping and he was like vaping my, my vape, his vape, whatever. And then we were like sharing it together. And then he was like, kind of giving me dirty looks but also like didn't leave the table and it was it was just weird and then the next thing I remember is being at the bar ordering shots he's like around me he's like saying things like oh you don't know me you don't know me I don't know you because obviously on Friday when I uh, went out with the girls I said I didn't know him so he was like mocking me basically And it was just a really interesting night. He was like way too drunk and he was being kind of rude. And then I later found out that he was getting mad at all my friends. He was getting into one of my girlfriend's faces because she was like trying to get him to go away. And he like wanted to get in between us. And he almost got in a fight with one of my friends. And my friends actually bought him a drink and he was like, fuck off. It was crazy. I was like, wow, like he must be really mad. So anyways... Saturday night, we actually ended up fighting again because we were fighting over this vape. And yeah, it was a whole thing with that. That was the last time that I saw him. And then I actually found out the next day 
that he was getting carried out by security because he was way too drunk. And he got in a fight with somebody else. And that guy had to fight him back. And he was just being a dickhead on the boat. So my guess is that he got the boat because he, he had to. He got way too drunk. Security knows him. He probably got kicked off. We don't know. But the last thing I heard is that he couldn't afford to get off the boat, but then he had to. So I guess I would have to get off the boat if I like got that drunk and I was trying to fight everybody. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> Anyways, he's gone off the boat. And then I, knowing that he got off the boat, I was like, okay, perfect. I'm just going to fucking stay on the boat then. I'm going to chill. And so the rest of the week, I literally just like had the best time, you guys. I like hung out with my friends. We like drank every day. <laughs> so bad. Um, we explored all the towns, all the cities. We ate together. And honestly, like these are the kind of relationships that I'm never going to forget. It's the moments when you're traveling solo and when you're going through a hard time and people are there for you, and even though they don't know you. So that's the tea when it comes to the cruise. It was a nightmare, a complete nightmare. He has me blocked on WhatsApp and I can't reach him. Not that I'm trying to, but he does have something on me that I need to figure out. So I do have to reach out to him at some point, but we're going to hold it off until things cool down. Because obviously there's a lot of anger going on. I'm okay. Like I'm not, you know, despite the fight that we had, that was very traumatizing. I just, I don't want to hold grudges. That's just not what I do. And if he does reach out to me, perfect. If he doesn't, I'm going to have to at some point because I need something back from him. Crossing my fingers, you guys. Pray for me that I get this back. It's actually very important. Very, 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 very important. So anyways, we haven't talked and it's been over a week now, which honestly feels like longer, but he is in Thailand. I'm also in Thailand. And the whole reason why I'm even here is because obviously I'm supposed to go to Asia with him. We were supposed to be on the same flight. We weren't obviously took different flights. We were supposed to be living together now. Now we're not. I'm in a completely different city, completely different plans changed. My life has changed now, you guys. Like I literally packed my check-in luggage and now I'm like, I have this giant thing I have to lug around. I'm like, fuck, <laughs> so much work. I wish I could just have my carry-on. So now I'm in Thailand and I'm back to solo traveling. I'm back to solo dinners, solo breakfasts, do my own thing. And it's been fine. It's been good. I honestly do miss this. I think I was putting a lot of energy into this relationship that I kind of forgot about myself. And that's actually another lesson that I learned from this experience is I need to stop focusing my attention on others and focus on me. Because when it comes to me, because I'm such a caring, empathetic person, I am an empath. Like I always tend to put other people first before myself. Even though a lot of people don't see that because it can come off as detached, but I really do. I tried really hard in this relationship, the hardest I've ever tried with anybody else. And it reflected in my work and my business and I was just not myself. So now that I have the space and now that I'm seeing a therapist, guys, I'm going to be having my first session with her. I'm excited to heal and to work through some of the issues that I've been pushing aside since, you know, Phil and I broke up and I'm excited for what's to come because obviously as I'm healing, as I'm investing in myself, it's going to help you guys because now I can show up better and serve my clients better and plan the IG lives and do the free group call that I said that I was going to do. So there are a lot of exciting things coming Despite these challenges over the past few months, I did have to go through them in order for me to blossom <laughs> eventually. And that's going to take time. But I just want to let you guys know that I'm still here for you. And thank you for listening to my fucking long ass life update. And just know that there's a lot of things coming your way. I will be preparing for Black Friday and Cyber Monday. If you guys know, every single year I do a Black Friday and Cyber Monday sale. It is usually the best savings of the year you'll ever get. This year, we're actually doing a little bit different than other years. It's going to be a lot bigger 
and better. So if you've been wanting to work with me in coaching and my courses or anything that I have to offer, stay tuned because Black Friday is going to be in a couple weeks. I'm going to be talking all about that on my IG stories, on Instagram, and also on the podcast. So This is the time, guys. We are entering the end of 2023 and entering 2024. You want to end it off on a good note. I'm sure I'm not the only one that has been going through shit over the past couple months. Astrologically speaking, there has been big shifts that has not only impacted me, but everyone else over the past couple months. If you felt it, it is real. I now will no longer doubt astrology. Um, If you guys know, I'm into astrology, but sometimes I'm not. But from this experience and exactly how it played out, it was exactly what I've read and what my psychic friends have told me. Like this was going to happen, that I was not going to be in a relationship with this guy and that things were going to end in October and it was going to be bad and it was going to be karmic. And it was, it was completely that. Speaking of karmic, if you guys have been in a karmic relationship, let me know. But for those of you who don't know what karmic relationships are and you're curious about if this story kind of resonates with you, karmic relationships are relationships that are meant to teach you a lesson and they're not meant to last. But you have to go through them in order to heal afterwards, hoping that you do take action, but to learn something about yourself and something you need to work on. Karmic relationships are very intense you fall in love very fast. You have an intense connection with that person. Lots of highs, very, very highs, but you also have very, very lows. And the lows are really bad and the highs are really high. So that's exactly how I felt with him. Highs are good. The lows were like awful, like very, very awful. So that being said, I've learned a lot from this experience. And it honestly just all goes back to what I've been preaching and talking about when it comes to eczema is focus on you okay because the moment that you focus on someone else you start to lose yourself in your own journey and your healing and that's what happened to me is I poured too much energy into one thing that I forgot about like my health I forgot well actually I was still working out but I forgot about like showing up for you guys as much as I wanted to I didn't have the energy for it And same goes when it comes to eczema healing, you know, the moment that you focus on you and you don't force the healing, allow it to happen, but also take care of yourself at the same time, that's where you're going to see the most results. And the other thing too, to remember and always remember from this experience is you can't seek validation and happiness from your external reality right? You're not going to look for the next relationship to make you happy. You're not going to look for the next diet to heal your skin. You're not going to be looking for the next supplement to heal your skin if the flares that you're experiencing is coming from an emotional aspect. And the moment that you can work on yourself and your emotions and learn to sit with them, that's really what I had to do as well. Like being on the boat, I had no internet service. Even though I was struggling, I was crying. I had nobody to talk to you guys. Like I only had myself and that was fucking hard. And that's something the universe was just like, Julia, you need to learn how to be by yourself and sit with your emotions and your thoughts. And that goes the same with anybody else, right? If you can sit with your own emotions and heal from your own thoughts and not self-sabotage, then you're going to be a strong person and you're going to get through anything. Because, you know, I always talk about mindset. If you spiral and you don't get out of that negativity, those things can get you really sick. Those thoughts can get you really sick. And we don't want that. We don't want that. So healing always comes from within. If you want to attract good things in your life, you need to do some kind of healing. Like therapy is the way to go. If there are root causes and wounds that you can't identify on your own, that's what therapists are there. If you can't figure out why you're flaring, this is why we have dietitians. We have practitioners who are skilled with eczema, right? So look for help and ask for help. Heal yourself from inside out and don't seek other ways, other methods that maybe you've been doing for a long time, like a diet and it's not working. Just like for me, you know, I got to start focusing on me and stop dating guys, I guess, until I can heal myself and be ready to attract a person who treats me right and who is loving and 
matches my energy. Honestly, that's what it is. Okay. If you guys are listening to this whole ass episode, I love you. Thanks for listening to my life update and the tea. There's obviously more to it, but it would be a fucking five hour episode. And let's just leave it at that. I feel like I already shared a lot already, probably a little bit too much, but that's basically life update. I'm now in Thailand. It is 9.30 p.m. And I'm about to go do my own thing or I am doing my own thing. We're going to buckle down now in Thailand. I'm going to be traveling less because I do want to just, like I said, focus on me, do therapy, start showing up. By the way, content is going to be different over the next few months because I feel like with me traveling so much over the past year, I've just been sharing content about traveling and not so much about eczema. And you guys are all here to learn about how to heal and all the tips. And that's what I'm here for. And even though you guys tell me you want to see more of the travels and it inspires you to have that life, to achieve that life, you guys aren't there yet, which is okay. But instead of showing you the outcome to showing you the life of what it's like to have clear skin, I'm ready to go back to showing you the step-by-step on how to heal. Think about me like two years ago when I just started my coaching and being online. I used to do like IG lives like all the time. I would host all these workshops and uh, free trainings and I would show up all the time. So we're going to go back to that. Content's going to be a lot different. It's going to be less on travels, less on me, more about you. We're going back to the basics and it's going to be a new era, you guys. It's going to be a new era of healing, a new era of showing up, providing value. We're going to fucking end off 2023 on a good note. And 2024 is going to be amazing. I'm excited and I love you guys. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you for following. If you have any questions, any concerns, you know I'm always here. I'm just a DM away. And now that I have more space and more time and I'm living my single life, I have more energy to help you guys with your healing. I love you guys so much. Next week, we're going to go back to the regular eczema-related topics, but just wanted to give you a life update so you know what to expect moving forward. Like I said, more content, different, less on travels, less about me, more on the tips. Black Friday's coming up, Cyber Monday. We also have Christmas. And then, of course, 2024, where it's going to be a new year. New year, new me, new you. Okay, have a good rest of your day. Have a good rest of your night. And we will catch you in the next episode. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode. Now, before I let you go, I want to let you know I have this amazing eczema visualization. This visualization has helped me so much when it comes to manifesting eczema healing, healing flares faster than I could ever imagine, reducing the itch, and just feeling great in my body. This is the exact same visualization I use for my own healing as well as my client's healing as well. And if you want to receive this visualization, then all you have to do is leave us a review and Tell us what you think about the podcast, screenshot it, send it to your email at hello at juliachan.ca and you will receive the visualization to your inbox. I look forward to seeing your review and we'll see you in the next episode.